Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. There are alternate channels for this platform. You can find them on Rumble, BitChute, and Brighteon, also under the Master's Voice blog or the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. All links for the Master's Voice can be found directly below every video. The website, themastersvoice.com, you can also find it below the video. Today, the prophecy is called the meltdown of the banking system. And I received this message from the Lord on March the 7th, just a few days ago. But before I go into the prophecy, the question that has been on my heart simply is this. Have you ever thought about how integrated the presence of God and the spirit of God and God himself, the knowledge of God, that the Bible says the knowledge of God will cover the entire earth as the waters cover the sea. But that is one day. That is not now. Right now, the knowledge of God does not cover the whole earth. There are places where the one true God has never been preached. There are places that do not accept that Jesus Christ is God, such as in the Islamic communities. But speaking to Christian communities or those who self-identify as Christians, even though they are not actively living Christian lives are honoring God the way they should, including those who live good, strong, well-planted Christian lives. Have you ever stopped to consider how integrated God is into your life? What do I mean by this? Do you carry the consideration of God with you everywhere? As we go through these financial prophecies, whereby I just realized today that there is yet another one that the Lord gave me, yet another dream. Today, I'm going to be simply speaking of a revelation and an instruction that the Lord gave me in this prophecy that is called the meltdown of the banking system. But as I am going through these financial prophecies that the Lord has been basically speaking to me about ever since we entered into 2023, have you ever asked yourself or taken a focused look at your life to ask yourself, how integrated is God into my life? Do you take the things that you have for granted? Will you, do you assume that having the card to swipe is just a normal thing and you swipe the card or being able to open your wallet and pull out cash according to what you owe? Is it just another passing thing for you? Do you live with an appreciation in your heart that what you have, God has given you, and as the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, time and circumstance comes to all men. Is it in your consciousness, and do you train up your children in the understanding that in this house we have, not because daddy is such a financial wizard, and not because mommy has invested her 401k here and there, do you train your children to rise up in the understanding that all that you have under your roof is by the grace of God and right next door in the same apartment or right next door in the same subdivision or right next door in another state are families who are facing hardships simply because it's not because of bad planning. It's not even because of bad luck. It is because time and circumstances come to all men simply because of changes in the economic landscape, simply because of changes that are coming down suddenly in the various business sectors, whole families, single individuals, elderly people who already went into retirement and thought that their time of working was done are being impacted by very hard body blows that are being landed left and right without warning on citizens here in the United States, on families, on small businesses, even upon big businesses all around the world. As we see that businesses have been shuttering since 2020, I spoke of this in one of my very old videos and said that even when lockdown ended, I noted that in my neighborhood in Brooklyn at that time, many small businesses did not come back for sale signs went up outside those businesses for rent signs went up outside those businesses. And I knew that the livelihoods that had once been small stores, barber shops, beauty salons, clothing stores, restaurants, and things like that had been hit such a hard and unexpected blow by the closures of 2020. 
by the forced layoffs of 2020 that they were simply unable to stay above the waterline and they sank to be seen no more? Do you practice the presence of God in your life? Do you implement practical steps of faith? Or are you calling yourself a Christian, but just living in this very surface way? Do you lay your hand on your car and say, Lord, I dedicate this car to you, not only for safety as I take it into traffic and into the busyness of the seas. For in the Bible, the seas represent the great mass of people. You see people zipping up and down on the highway, going here and there, and they have nary a thought that they could simply have an accident that brings their lives or somebody else's life to an end. Do you lay your hand on the car and dedicate the car to the keeping power of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you speak to the car and open your heart honestly to God and say, Lord, I am standing on the promises of Psalm 91. A thousand may fall by my side and 10,000 by my right hand, but they will never repossess this car from me because me and Marge and the kids need and depend on it. We realize that even though we have a certain amount of income, we are not entitled to anything because we are stewards. Therefore, we ask the Holy Spirit to bless this car, keep it in our ownership for as long as we need it. Do you practice practical things like laying your hand on your wallet or your other measures of storage and praying the blood of Jesus over them? Do you say to God, I thank you, Father, that as I put my hand on this purse, this wallet, the devourer will not come and take away what I have? Or is it just assumed that because we live in modern society, just the way we sit on planes and we implicitly trust that the pilot knows what he's doing and will get us from LaGuardia to JFK or from LaGuardia to LAX without any problems, do we just trust that things just work out because we're a child of God? We say it with the mouth. Doesn't God say, these people, they're close to me with the mouth, but far away from me in our hearts self-examine because the times that are coming, I have been saying it consistently on this channel, are going to test and prove who the real children of God are and who are the ones with roots that are as small as spring onions who will simply melt in the great financial fires that are on the way. The title of the prophecy the meltdown of the banking system, March the 7th, 2023. The banner scripture is this. They will throw their silver into the streets and their gold will seem unclean. Their silver and gold cannot save them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their appetites or fill their stomachs with wealth for it became the stumbling block that brought their iniquity. Ezekiel 7 and 19 and here God is talking about how wealth, the love of it, is the root of all evil. Ezekiel 7, 19 is saying that money became to a certain bunch of people the stumbling block that brought them into iniquity. I spoke of iniquity in the last video and I said that iniquity is an ingrained sin that you cannot shake off. You can't get rid of it. It is like a repetitive tape a background screensaver that just keeps running in a person li person's life. And the reason for it, it is because it was an open door through which a person sinned and then demons entered in and began to greatly harden and empower the sin until the sin overtook the person. And now the person commits the sin like a pattern uniformly and they can't get rid of it unless and until there is deliverance, until there is a stronger outside power that is able to attack the operation of the pattern and bring the pattern, the iniquity, to an end. And so God is saying here in this scripture that filling the stomach with money and satisfying the appetite with money is not possible. Now, at first glance, you might think, well, when I'm hungry, I pay for food and I eat it. But what God is literally saying for a lot of the Bible, many of its scriptures are exactly what they mean. He's simply saying, you can't eat money when you are hungry and you cannot consume wealth to satisfy your palate. And this same wealth 
became the stumbling block, block that brought a people into iniquity, meaning into hardened sin. And this is a picture of how America trusts so greatly in her money. America trusts so greatly to the sanctity and the universal buying power of the U.S. dollar. But what will happen when a mallet comes from heaven and smashes not only the dollar, but the custodians of the dollar, the Federal Reserve, and the banking system of America? This is what the Lord was saying. And so I was praying on the 7th. It was my day off. I had been working on the blog, and that's why I was able to put up two prophecies instead of one. And I was talking to God about personal things in my own life. But as I always find, when my heart is very open to God, he responds according to the importance of what he wants to say. So it's not like he doesn't give me answers, but he will speak to me about what is on his mind because the channels of prayer have opened up for me to hear and receive from God. And the Lord began to speak about this same financial crisis that he says is coming. Which financial crisis is this? Is this a partial financial crisis? Is this something that's just going to rock the boat and scare us a little bit? And then what's his name? Hank Paulson and friends are going to be able to stave it off like they did last time. No, the Lord says that the financial crisis coming is going to be worse than 2008 a crash that will devastate the United States economy totally and take it back to 1931 levels. These are direct quotes from previous prophecies. Now in 1931 is when America kind of woke up to the fact that she was in a difficulty. Prior to that, they had the roaring twenties, the champagne was flowing, the nightclubs were full, the performances and artists were world famous and everybody was doing the Charleston and eating steak. But all that largesse, reckless spending, reckless borrowing, and hardly any regulation of all that money led to a sudden slump and shaking in the money. And between 1929 and 1931, America began to realize that she had reached the top of a very dangerous roller coaster. From 1931 to 1933, she took a horrible, horrible downward spiral. The entire nature of this country changed. Entire industries collapsed. Tycoons were jumping off the top of skyscrapers when they realized that they were paupers. They were bankrupt and penniless. Suicide took a spike and this country became so so, so poor. So whenever God is warning about these things, he is always bringing up Noah. And God wants us to understand that the reason these prophecies have been going on for quite a while is not because God is not serious about what he's saying. People always listen and then they will say, you've been saying these things for a long time and anyway, we can find out these things from the financial experts. What God wants us to know is that the length of time that he has been using to talk is exactly what he did with Noah. God showed extreme grace towards the people of Noah's day using Noah. Noah had from the time he was 500 years old and he was a father of three, unto the time he finished the boat and God told him to get into it when he was 600 years old, a 100 year period during which he was building for himself a refuge and Noah never intended to get on that boat alone. Noah preached righteousness, obedience to God and taking heed of God's words for the entire time it took to get that massive boat ready. Noah never stopped because of people's mockery. Noah never doubted God because had Noah doubted God, he would have been unable to carry through with a project so large that it probably could be seen from surrounding towns with a project that probably required all his time and effort and the time of effort and the time and effort of his sons, Noah going into town constantly to get materials and being asked, where's the rain, Noah? He was unperturbed. He was unmoved. 
Noah believed God in spite of mockery. Noah is the poster child to today's Christians to tell you that if you have not developed a tough enough heart and when people mock you, it disappoints you, it depresses you, how on earth are you going to carry on to the point where God finally vindicates you by bringing his prophecies true? Why are you moved when people cut you off? Don't you know that this is part of the sifting of how light comes out of darkness, of how sheep separate with goats? And I always say for my part, if I was moved, would there not be just one video on this channel, the introduction, and then people say something and I'm like, oh God, I can't follow through. I follow through because I know that out there, even in goat nation, are people that God is getting ready to break the horns off their head and turn them into sheep, or they are going to realize the mess that they're in, and they're going to shave those horns off themselves and say, Lord, please turn me into a sheep. I can't tell who's going to end up sheep and who's going to end up goats. And so I go out as a sower and I sow God's words because I know that the words of God cannot come back to him void. Someone has to respond. Someone has to believe. Someone has to realize that if they keep listening to Julie Green and Lance Will Know and Robin What's His Face and Troy Black and Carrie Ann Giddon and Amanda Grace, that they are going to smash into walls of economic hardship that will make their heads spin. Someone has to realize that it is better to pull the band aid off now and fortify their faith than to continue on with people promising you an ABC type of presidency. And this is going to be great again, because when you end up in the reality that God intends for us, you will not be able to take it. Someone will hear these words. It will find good ground. I trust God for a hundredfold return. And this is why the camera goes on and on and on, regardless of what's going on on this end. For as long as he needs me to come, I will come. And so if we have a hearing ear like baby Samuel, whom Eli taught to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening, then God will prepare us and have us living in watchful readiness. Watchful readiness is where your spirit is learning to balance in between the shocks and the fear of whatever it is that the Holy Spirit is warning us about, and yet you're not becoming jaded. You're not becoming worn down by the prophecies. I always say, watch that these prophecies don't rob you of your faith. Why? Imagine if hearing the prophecy makes you tired, how on earth are you going to actually live through it? If just hearing it is enough to kill the seed of faith in you, how are you going to cope when the prophecy gets going for real? It means you die a first death upon hearing, and then you die again when it's time to live it out. And that is not God's intention. These prophecies hit the heart because God wants the heart to know that the heart has no clue how to navigate the future that is ahead without Jesus. These prophecies are meant to not drive you to the comment section to comment so much as they are to drive you into the arms of the only one equipped to carry you through this. Jesus is our Moses. Jesus is our Moses. He's going to part the water. He's going to lead the way. But if you don't know how to go back to him and you just freeze in paralysis, then the hearing, though you hear, the seed will be no good in you. It will not return a righteous harvest to you, your family, or unto the Lord. And so as I was praying to God, he began to say how gracious he is and that the time he is taking for these words to come to pass has always been his mercy, his love, and his grace. And then he was very factual, and here is what he said. The banks are going to have a massive meltdown. All banks, all of them. This crash, God said that no bank will survive it. 
He said that all America's banks are going to fail. They are all going to collapse like dominoes going down one after another after another. And there is going to be no attempt made from any quarter to save any of them. So the difference between now what's coming in 2008 is that in 2008, they got into a quick football huddle and they tried to save the too big to fail. 2008 is where we got too big to fail, where this is going to be all fail to fail. No one's going to be able to help them. He said the government is not going to help them this time. There will be a total failing of the banking system in this country, and it will be like molten liquid running down, like iron melting in a furnace, liquefaction of bank bonds and assets that rely on paper money. And this word liquefaction, I had to look it up and I will provide the definition shortly. So as God was speaking to me and telling me that this crash is going to be whole, total, widespread, totally across the board, I began to see a raging fire, a very tall skyscraper standing against what just looks like the U.S. Manhattan skyline. So these were all the fancy, tall, glass-surfaced skyscrapers on roaring fire. The fire was across all these tall buildings, and they were melting. They were melting in this furnace of heat that literally made it look as if the sun had come down on these buildings. And I was seeing big name banks burning up in broad daylight on Banker's Row. Banker's Row is just basically those enclaves where rich banks, bougie banks, posh banks, middle-sized banks can afford very pricey real estate and they tend to huddle together. Why? Because they're all in the same business. So here we have Wall Street, but I know for instance, in the UK, they call that area in London, the city. That is what they call that area. And so every building that I was seeing burning down was wearing sort of like a metal chain. You know, like the Masons have that big metal chain. All the buildings were wearing a metal chain around them. And then here there was a white tag and their name was on it. But because of the fire or just because God would not want me to sit here and name them, I could not see the names written on the bank. So I didn't see any name written on any of the big banks or the tall banks or the middle-sized banks that were burning. The only thing I kept hearing as I was watching those buildings melt like popsicles in the sun was liquefaction, liquidation, liquefaction, liquidation. And all those buildings went down in that fire. Not a single bank was spared. The only difference that I saw among the meltdown of the banks is that some banks melted clear to the ground and became nothing but a puddle of iron. And some banks melted to different heights, different levels. And then somehow the fire went out and the building became like a calcified stump. So it was exactly the way fingers are. Some burnt to here, some burnt here, and some burnt all the way down here, and maybe some here, and others burnt clear to the ground. And the Lord said that not a single bank will survive the financial collapse in America. They will all go down one after another in what he called a domino effect. And God said that after that is coming a new form of money, and we will never be able to leave that money. We will never be able to go back from it. So what is liquefaction? Liquefaction, as I looked it up, is a geological process that happens during natural natural, natural disasters. It says that the earth will lose its normal character either because of sudden shifts, sudden shearing forces where the earth is made to tear too fast like landslides and earthquakes and things like that, or in places where the rain has been going on constantly way above normal for too long. And then suddenly the ground becomes very soft. So the ground will lose its solid character as ground and just begin to act as water. It will suddenly liquefy. And when that happens, whatever is standing upon that ground, whether it's a building, whether it's a tall building, a house, or even where you park your car, because the ground changes its character from solid to liquid, whatever is standing upon it suddenly enters into it. And I found a very excellent picture of that. And I hope that you will be able to see it. That is a car 
And we all know that cars don't park that way. You can see ground level and the car literally sank into the ground. And that kind of thing that is lost cannot be pulled out again. Liquefaction in simple terms means that things that can't possibly sink into the earth do sink into the earth. And sometimes they go right out of sight. And so God is saying that the same thing will happen in the financial world. Banks and enterprises of all kinds are going to absolutely disappear from the economy. And before I forget, I just want to say to America, Kmart, Toys R Us, Sears, flagships of the U.S. economy, they haven't survived. They don't exist anymore. They're just names that we used to know. Some things will disappear only partially. They will become the stumps that I spoke about, but everything he said will be hit so hard that even what looked solid one minute will be wiped out the next minute, sink and collapse. The next thing he said is that we are going into coin money. This is not silver and gold coins. This is not the wealth that people are stockpiling as bars or metals or coins. It is a kind of coin money that will be used exclusively on the phone, in an app, and in the cloud. I am not speaking of Bitcoin either. He said that it is not Bitcoin, that Bitcoin and all the other free and privately owned forms of cryptocurrency will also fail. So this money, he just called it coin and the next prophecy I'm going to cover is called the nascent rise of coin, which means the soon coming rise. That's what na nascent means. It means soon coming or soon to be seen rising in the background. Coin is a standardized form of currency that will eventually be used all over the world as the financial arm of the beast. It is one global currency for all. And there was a prophecy that I posted about this talking about coin and it is the prophecy underwater. And I will just cover that briefly. This prophecy was from last year, July, 2022, where God gave several prophecies, February. And I think there was one in June and then there was another one in July. And he kept saying that money is going away, that this and that is going to crash. And so I will just cover a little bit of that. Just a moment, please. And so in this prophecy underwater, which is from July 14, 2022, the Lord was saying that the New York Stock Exchange, the, the NASDAQ, the FTSE, the Dow Jones is going to crash. He said, tell them the NASDAQ, FTSE, New York Stock Exchange, the Dow Jones, and every other form of currency and investment platform that they're trusting in is going to be flooded on purpose. It's going down underwater, all of it. It's already impossible to really make a fortune using these indices because they are rigged to favor the super rich, the super wealthy. Anyone who thinks he's making money on it is actually making only pennies compared to where the real trades are happening. Money is being exchanged in a secret part of the stock exchange where ordinary people will never find it or be able to participate in it. The system is rigged. The rich know the score. Ordinary people can't even find where the real money is traded. It is kept in plain sight, and yet it is not visible at all. And the Lord was teaching me, since I know nothing about this, he said that the stock exchange is actually this kind of fun playground for people who are in the know. And the way they fund the game is that they open up the trades to ordinary people who then put their money into the game, thinking that they're coming into a level playing field to make money. But he said that once you put your money on the board, these guys kind of treat it like chips at the poker table. They pull the money into a secret part and it becomes the player's money. So he said they call themselves names like the players, the untouchable, the uber rich, that they have click names for themselves. And they play with this money um, in a secret part of the stock exchange. And even if you're out there and you're thinking, oh no, this is going up, I'm making money. It's actually them making money in a secret part of 
the stock exchange. Another prophecy that I would like to touch on briefly, oh, he also said that a lot of the stock exchange, it is run almost exclusively by insider trading. And this is why ordinary people can't possibly seem to bring in as much as those who are in the know. Now, the last prophecy that I would like to cover is called, just a moment, please. It is called Makeup, Money, and Monsters, and I got that in June of 2022. And the section I would like to cover here with you now was called The Destruction of Money in the World Economy. And the same scripture I read today came again. They would throw their silver, silver into the streets and their gold will be treated as an unclean thing. Silver and gold would not be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It won't satisfy their hunger. It will not fill their stomachs for it has caused them to stumble into iniquity. And then what Lord God said to me at that time was, you will have trouble getting money out of their bank in a short time. There will be a mass, mass shortage of bills, physical money that you call hard cash because the banks have no liquidity. The banks are overstretched in their dealings and they have no actual funds to back up everything that they're doing in terms of trading. They cannot guarantee their deposits by any stretch of the imagination. He said that America's banks especially, but also major banks around the world are running a high stakes poker game that they have a lot of perceived clout and solid reputations in the market, but God said that they don't have a single penny required for them to keep on hand by law to pay up if somebody wanted their money. He says, if anyone wants to take their money from the bank, it will be hard for them to get it. And you can already see that because they're starting to put limitations on how much cash you can withdraw at the ATM and inside the branch. He says this dangerous situation is already at the end of its logical rope. Now you must prepare for mass chaos and societal breakdown once it becomes public news that the banks are no longer sound. They don't have money on site. They don't have money at the banking halls and in the vaults. They do not receive the incoming physical capital that they should every day to maintain the base rate financial liquidity. It is a foregone conclusion that America's banks will crash and my word that I gave shall be fulfilled. And here's the word. The USA will suffer a financial crisis that is worse than all previous ones except this time there's no rescue coming by the government or by anyone. The economy will be destroyed and conditions equal to or worse than the Great Depression will arise. And God added this, it is wise that you marry a rational man that has common sense enough to always keep a duffel bag of money and other resources in the house. Do not marry a complacent fool who does not know or watch the signs of the times. This is the warning of God. The banking crisis is coming, not being able to get money, no longer able to afford goods and services because they will be priced right out of the reach of most people. Again, in this prophecy, he said, beast money is on the way. The banking crisis will remove hard currency from circulation and the banks themselves will crash. It will be allowed to happen because now is the day of the new world order. It is the time to do away with currency, hard cash, and physical money to raise, to raise up and implement the online money of the beast. A new cryptocurrency is the beast money system. And so... You can hear how consistent God's word is. He has been saying the same thing for a long time, and it is now time for us to move from fear and paralysis to doing the things I said in the beginning of this video. Make God your mainstay and your hope and involve him in your day-to-day -day financial decisions. Thank you to everyone who supports me. I am grateful to you, and may the Lord bless you and return it to you. This is Celestial, and this is the Master's voice. Until I see you again. Goodbye.